After a record-breaking 7th ATP trophy, Novak Djokovic has topped the rankings for yet another year. We talked about that last week when he wrapped up the world number one ranking after winning one match at the ATP Finals. Let's go have a look at the rankings and see how we end 2023 season. But first, let's go to what happened at the ATP Finals. So the only result we had this week was Novak Djokovic playing Yannick Sinner in the final of the ATP Finals. And of course, Djokovic losing to Sinner in the group stage, but winning the title 6-3, 6-3 in the final. He was on another level. He was serving amazing, and he wins his seventh trophy at this event. But Sinner had a great year as well. Great to end of the season to add a little bit of a boost to his rankings as well. Let's do a bit of an overview of the rankings this year and see who's actually gone up the highest from this time last year and also who's dropped down the lowest. So starting with some of the players that have gone up the most this year, Wondrusova. She's gone up 85 spots, finishing the year at number seven in the world. She started at number 92 in the world, so that's a huge boost for her in the rankings. Mukova, she goes up to number eight in the world, which is a career high for her. 143 spots higher than last year. She actually started the year off at 151 in the world. And Ben Shelton, he's gone up 79 spots to finish the year off at number 17 in the world, starting the year off just inside the top 100 and now well and truly into the top 20. So some big jumps for those players and no surprise that all of those players did well at the slams and that's mainly reason why they've actually gone up in the ranks. Some of the players that went down in the rankings throughout the year, Nemo Osaka. She started the year off as number 42 in the world and she is currently unranked, dropping more than a thousand spots to lose all her points. Of course, we're going to see her at the Australian Open, hopefully, so she can regain her ranking. Nick Kyrgios, same thing. He's dropped all his ranking points and is now considered unranked after being number 22 in the world at the start of the season. And Rafa Nadal, he started the year off as number two in the world and he is currently ranked 664 in the world, which is a drop of 662 places. Of course, after getting injured in the first few weeks of the season, that definitely didn't help him. So he's going to come into the new season relatively unranked as well. So some big names there that didn't get to play much tennis this year and some of them didn't even play any tennis, losing a lot of ranking spots. All right, let's start with the WTA rankings. We've already gone through this, but let's recap with Sviantec at number one, Sabalenka at two, not too far behind, which could be interesting to start the season next year. We've got Goff at number three with Rabakina at four, Pagula State at five with Jabur at six, Vondrusova at seven, Mukova at eight, Zachary at nine, and Krajikova rounds out the top 10 for the 2023 season. Three Czech players and two Americans in the top 10. Really interesting to see how these players do next year and how many of them can stay in the top 10 in 12 months time. And over to the ATP, we had no changes to the rankings, just to the points. Novak Djokovic, he extends the lead against Carlos Alcaraz. It's going to be very hard for Alcaraz to get to world number one again until maybe, I don't know, maybe the grass, maybe, maybe the US Open Series. I don't know. He's at number two, Alcaraz, with Medvedev at number three. Sinner adds 1,000 points to his total after this week. Gets number four for the end of the year. And Rublev at five. We've got Sissipas at six. Zverev at seven. Runa at eight. Her catch at nine. And Taylor Fritz rounds out the top ten for this year. But like I said, Alcaraz... Doesn't have any points to defend at the Australian Open, so there's a chance he could close the gap, but it's very unlikely that he's going to get world number one ranking until, I mean, I don't know, until Djokovic decides to get bored of it, I guess. So there it is, the final ranking show. We're done. The rankings are set. Sviantec, Djokovic, they end the year at world number one. It came down to the last match for Sviantec last week. That was awesome. And Djokovic, he only needed one match to win at the ATP Finals to wrap that up. But look, Alcaraz and Sabalenka, they're still not that far behind. I mean, Alcaraz a little further behind. Needs to do a little bit more work next year. The French Open is definitely his for the taking, I feel, next year. And of course, Wimbledon is the defending champion. So you just never know. But let me know down in the comments below. What's been the most exciting part of the year for the rankings for you? I mean, has it been that Djokovic, Alcaraz back and forth? Felt like every week we did this show, there would be a new world number one. Of course, on the women's side, the Sviantec Sabalenka battle, that was a fun one as well. Maybe it's somebody like a Rabakina who finally gets to the top of the game where she deserved to be last year. Of course, Wimbledon didn't give her any points, so that means she wasn't up the top, but maybe it was that. Maybe it was the resurgence of Daniel Medvedev after dropping out of the top 10. Then he comes back in. Maybe it was that, but let me know down in the comments below what's been the biggest part of the rankings for you this year and the favorite part of the rankings, but Novak Djokovic, Igor Sviantec, you're in number ones again.